Um, all right, welcome everybody to the Alternative Energy Committee meeting of May 9th, 2024. We are beginning at 7.32 and uh, in accordance with Massachusetts open meeting laws, we're allowed to do this virtually by Zoom. Um, if we do take votes, however, we do need to do a roll call vote uh, where we each say our name and how we vote. So let's begin. Um, we have a lot to talk about. The first thing I would like to do is have us uh, do a quick review, if you haven't already, to approve or comment on the meeting minutes. So why don't we start with our last Alternative Energy Committee meeting on April 25th, 2024. They look good to me. Martha, you do an incredible job. Excuse me, thank you. <laughs> Colin. <laughs> By the way, right. at a meeting of, of um, 350 Mass, I was asked to be the secretary, and I had to tell them that last time I was secretary for an organization, they fired me. So <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate you guys that can take notes and do a good job at it. They're excellent. I am told that our meeting minutes are the envy of the town committees. Stop mm -hmm. that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Wow. The fact that they're posted on a prompt basis, the fact that they're so detailed and interesting and people who missed the meetings that wanted to attend are able to follow what was being done. So congratulations. That's so nice. Thank you. I, I, really, for me, it's an opportunity to really um, just digest everything and learn what on earth we're talking about. So thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. So April 25th, 2024, Debbie said they look good, but I'd entertain a motion I'll, to I'll approve. Make a, I'll make a motion to approve. Do I have I'll a second? Second. second. Okay, a second from Barbara Russell. Is there any discussion? All right. Uh, we will have to do a roll call vote. So uh, why don't we move around? Tanya Bodell, aye. Chris Hodgson, aye. Don't all speak at once. See you later, aye. Debbie Cook, aye. Martha again, Jimmy, aye. Barbara Russell, aye. Doran Hole, aye. Excellent. The meetings have been approved. Perfect. Um, the next set of meeting minutes, there were only four of us in attendance. So I think we're going to have three abstentions. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed the meeting minutes of April 26, 2024, which was our posted meeting for the Electric School Bus Welcome event. And we posted that as a meeting because we knew or hoped we'd have more than four people and therefore it would constitute a um, alternative energy committee energy. meeting where we might talk about um, things and, and discuss things, in which case, case we need to post it. The school committee did the same thing. I, I don't know if they had a quorum though, but we did. So there are four people who attended. Um, hopefully everybody else got to enjoy the pictures. Um, is there, and we'll debrief on that event later in the agenda. So this is just to approve the meeting minutes from April 26th. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Second. Thank you, Debbie. All right. Uh, all in favor? Oh, is there any discussion? All right. Tanya Bodell, aye. Chris Adlison, aye. Debbie Cook, aye. Barbara, <laughs> Barbara Russell, aye. <laughs> I was absent. So you say I abstain. Steve Winter, I abstain. Steve Winter, I abstain. Doran Hole, I abstain. I guess Martha Jimmy abstains as well. Okay, perfect. Excellent. So our meeting minutes are approved. I will make those final and send them to be posted um, to the town staff. So thank you very much for doing that. All right. First item on the agenda is the update from our amazing town staff committee liaison, Montana Castle. And I didn't put down any details, but generally um, you give us an update on the things that you've been working on in your action items from the prior month. 
Yes. So starting um, with the, I know we're going to touch base on it later, but just in regards to national grid um, one, there is a conference next week and I will be going and Jake, um, who is part of our maintenance team and he has the green teams community or sorry, green team, green communities grant. He will be speaking on behalf of Cohasset um, per national grids request, which is very exciting. It's happening at Holy Cross on the 14th from 8 to 3 p.m. It's free, so I'm, I'll send the um, invitation if any of you guys can join. I went to a MAPC conference there last fall, um, and they did a really good job. They had great speakers, so I'm sure it will be a great um, conversation about energy efficiency and savings this time. Um, on the same topic of National Grid, I've been talking to Michelle about you doing like the police station for um the possibility of the community savings program she's not opposed um she's definitely intrigued by it there was just some follow-up questions like because it's a police station it needs to be 24 7 what happens if there's a power outage what's with the generator like a few different things so i'm speaking with amanda um i started talking to her this afternoon about it and she put me in touch with gloucester's sustainability coordinator who went through um, doing a few public safety buildings. She hasn't gone back to me if it's been a police station, but they've done a fire station, which also Michelle is not opposed to, and possibly considering doing the town hall since that's a multi-year um, retrofitting process. But that's where we're at right now. Um, in terms of the chargers, I know Michelle reached out to you, Tanya, with further information um, on the type and possibly where they're going. So there's that. And then the other thing Actually, was- Actually, Montana, that, can you, do you have the information? Do you wanna just update the whole committee on that? I was CC'd on it. I think she she accidentally forgot to add me. So only you were on the chain. So if you, if you wanna share, please be my guest. Okay, well, we can talk about it later in the agenda. Um, and then the last thing was the national grid um, buying the community aggregation for her request. We are not allowed to talk prices um, deadlines just because it's under review at this time. So we can talk about it offline um, or you can call her over the phone. And when well, did, can... well, we're going to get an update on that from Steve, I think. Okay. Montana, can you send around that, that, uh, that conference information? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I can do that after the meeting. Um, and then, so I did mention to the subcommittee yesterday, so my last day in person will be May 23rd. I'm moving to New York City. Um, and hopefully I will be continuing working with you guys remotely until June 30th, but that is still being discussed with Michelle and Chris. Um, but your June, um, 13th or 14th meeting will be run by Kevin. So you don't have to worry about Zoom or anyone taking care of you guys and make sure that someone will be there for you. Um, even if I am here, I will be away in Tennessee. So I just want to make sure everything was lined up for the June meeting. Um, but that is it on my end as of right now, unless someone please remind me if I forgot something. Okay, so you this may be your last meeting. It may be my last meeting, yes. <laughs> oh. Yes. Well, on behalf of the entire committee, I want to thank you for your amazing support and positive attitude and effectiveness and efficiency. And if there's anybody else who would like to provide adjectives that describe to you how Montana has been able to interact with us so effectively, um, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Montana. You're terrific. We're going to miss you. You have big, big, big shoes, probably a size 14 or something. <laughs> and then, <laughs> she's like, she's like in the fire brigade. You know, we call her when our hair is on fire and things are not going well, like linked to Montana's calm and she calms people like me down and she fixes it like immediately. So Simple, simple tasks, simple tasks. Whoever takes over will, I'm also 
to calm any future nerves. I'm making like a manual on like what you guys need. And like, I'm going to leave them with basically everything up to like the moment I leave. So there won't be any questions in terms of transition of like what you guys are working on, what your expectations are, like agendas, meetings, any of that. And make sure whoever takes over, they'll be okay. Thank you. And well, there'll I, be a password for the Dropbox? Yes. Okay. Sorry, so go ahead. I, I compliment you like in emails all the time because you you respond like so quickly and it's just, it's really wonderful. But can you give us a little clue about where what's up for you or? Um, I am 24 and I want to go live life in the big city and I no, I don't have a job lined up. I'm going to go wait tables. Um, and that's about it right now. <laughs> that, that's all I can give you. Cause that's all I know about myself. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll wait tables just perfectly. Well, you'll be a big asset to some whatever company you end, ends up hiring you. Yeah. The goal is to have a job by September when my classes yeah. start back up again, but I want the summer just to figure it out. Maybe like join a salsa dancing club. I don't know. <laughs> I've been like so busy for the past year and a half. I haven't had downtime to myself. So I'm like, I'm going to take this little break, find a job, take a breath while I don't have classes like a maniac and just enjoy the city life. So, so are you going to be back in the fall? No. Um, so I'm at the Harvard extension school in the sustainability program, which is completely remote. So I'm luckily able to take my classes from anywhere. And I'm really excited because I have some peers in New York city that I've been working with and they've been helping me look for jobs that I'm excited to meet in person and connect with. So So yeah, that that's all on my end. <laughs> nice. Excellent. Um, Montana, why don't you send around everybody your resume? And if they know oh. anybody in New York City who might be interested with first finding somebody with your background, they can perhaps forward it and offer to make an introduction. Thank you, Tanya. And as much as we hate to do that, mm -hmm. we have to let the excellence go and propagate and fill the rest of the world. Thank you. I really do love working with you guys. You guys are like, I, I personally think the most progressive committee that I've got to work with. So you guys get a lot of good stuff done. Thank you. All right. Great, but sad report but we're very excited for you and i think all of us are jealous of your ability to go live life in the big city yeah just me and my cats and my partner we're taking we're just gonna make a move so <laughs> that's what people always say they're like oh yeah you have no responsibilities i'm like yes that's exactly how i feel <laughs> excellent all right, Community Choice Aggregation Program. Steve, what do you have to report? All right, well, <laughs> so we had a pre-bid meeting a few days ago, and I can't give you details, <laughs> but uh, things are looking good. And um, next week we should have um, should have our next contract. It's likely to be a three-year term, which is good. And uh, I can just tell you that I'm happy with what uh, Good Energy tells us about pricing. I would like to share something on my screen that uh, Patrick Roach uh, showed us in, in our previous meeting. I think you'll find it very interesting. So I'll try to share my screen here, see if I have permission to do that. Ah, yes. Okay. So uh, I thought you could take a look at this uh, move you guys out of the way here okay um and maybe i'll blow it up a little bit so the bar chart there shows where our power is coming from and i thought it's quite interesting um uh, i don't think you uh most of us have looked at this chart before uh the uh the green bars at the bottom are the uh, class one recs uh, mainly uh, wind and solar, mostly from Massachusetts. A, a couple uh, uh, 
facilities in Rhode Island and uh, New Hampshire, I think, or Vermont, but mostly from mostly in Massachusetts. So you'll see in this year, we had uh, by law 24% in that category as uh, uh, required by the RPS, you know, Renewable Portfolio Standard um, Regulation. Um, and from there on, it goes up at 3% a year, let's see. Now, uh, there is also some um, landfill gas in that. I don't think very much, but, uh, and I'm not terribly happy about that, but there are uh, uh, three biodigesters that are in, in the, um, uh, in the uh, classified as uh, um, class one RECs. By the way, these RECs are purchased for us by the um, uh, the Massachusetts uh, Consumers Clean Energy Consumers Alliance. Uh, they're the ones who provide the uh, the RECs uh, to uh, um, for our program. So, anyways, they have some biodigesters, which uh, are. Uh, not considered biofuels, even though the biofuels are used to make the methane, um, uh, the biogas methane is still not uh, uh, considered to be uh, bio um, um, biofuels. Um, anyways, then above that, you see in this dark green area, we have 4% here. Now, what is that? Um, up here, it's labeled as the clean energy standard remainder. Uh, I asked Patrick about that. It's mostly a class one RECs also, but apparently that's more, the utility purchases more class one RECs, provides more than class one RECs than required by law, by the RPS standard, which is good. And over here, you see it, it jumps way up. So what's that about? Well, that's, um, Patrick said that that was uh, the hydro, they're expecting to get hydro uh, from Quebec at that point. Um, so that's what they're anticipating. Now, um, over here, this is from uh, mass, uh, mass.gov, where they tell you what the different kinds of uh, renewable energy is. So there's a somewhat of a, of a mis mismatch here. This is the clean energy, clean energy um, standard uh, extra, what do they, what do they call it, uh, remainder which is described as wind, solar, and landfill gas, but not hydro, as Patrick told me. So I don't know. Uh, there's, uh, I'm a little bit confused about exactly what these are, uh, but you'll see in, in the next one here, CESE, that's nuclear and large hydro, which I would think would be the Quebec stuff. That's the light green here. And then, uh, and then a couple of minor categories, which are um, a small hydro, um, and landfill gas, uh, and trash burning. Uh, some there's some minor stuff in there, and this 10% here, that's us. That's our standard program. We've got 10% above the uh, RPS uh, required. So that's Class One Rex. Uh, and if if we purchase 100% renewable, what we call 100% renewable in our aggregation program. All that does is take this green bar and fills it up to 100%. It doesn't make all of this class one RECs. It just makes that 31% or 28% this last year, uh, makes that part um, class one RECs. Um, so anyways, this is time marches on by uh, 2030 with our, even with our standard program, uh, and that in, in a sense will be 100% renewable if you would don't choke to death on the uh, on, on the uh, biodigester um, part of the uh, that small part of the uh, energy mix. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, it's hard to explain, you know, <laughs> 100% doesn't really mean 100% RECs, uh, class one RECs. It just means that uh, that 28% above there becomes class one RECs. Um, oh, this is where where uh, we're cited. Um, oh, I forgot to put the other chart in there. I wanted to show you. There was another chart. Um, I'll stop sharing, sharing here. Uh, 
where does it say stop? Oh, here, stop share. Okay. Um, so another chart he showed us was the change in the utility rate over the uh, the first term of our program. And as you recall, that when our program went live, uh, our price was half the rate of national grids, which was you know 34 cents or some 35 cents, something like that, and we were around half that. Uh, that didn't last too long, lasted a few months. And then, and then uh, that uh, <clears throat> late that spring, uh, National Grid changed their summer rates to be a little bit less than what ours were. So, oh my gosh, oh, <laughs> we were embarrassed a bit. But then um, this last summer, or the last rate change, they actually went above our rate. So we had a short period where we we're making money like gangbusters over their rate. Uh, a longer period where uh, they were a couple cents cheaper, and then a, 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 a longer period still when we were a couple uh, points uh, cents cheaper than than them. So overall, we have saved a, a good bit of money. And I ask if um, National Grid could give us a an average uh, savings uh, per kilowatt hour, uh, you know, weighted over the uh, the usage you know, in those three periods and uh, I got a semi-positive response, but uh, I don't know. We could we could estimate it ourselves, of course, but we don't know exactly what the uh, usage was in those three periods, so we wouldn't be able to come up with an exact number, but they would. Anyways, uh, that's it for my report. I just want to tell you that uh, hang tight. Uh, Michelle was at uh, at the pre-bid meeting, and and Chris has agreed to be available to sign the contract. <laughs> uh, when it becomes necessary, uh, the uh, pre-bid, you know, the pre-contracts have been reviewed by uh, town council and there are no problems. So we're good to go uh, or anticipate being good to go. <laughs> and the, oh, our current contract is up in December sometime, apparently. I think it's October. Uh, I think I heard. Well, that's what I thought, too. But I thought I heard Patrick say say December. But anyways, whatever. So they're going out to bid for a three year from January 25 to December 27. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Steve, All would right. you mind sending me a copy of that chart? Sure. Thank you. You're on mute, Deb. Um, I, Steve, I was wondering I mean, I know you're not supposed to talk about it, but if you have the sense whether the 100% option might be competitive, whether we should start thinking about dusting off our, you know, effort to get people to upgrade. Oh, I definitely think we should. Yeah, because uh, we can, that's why I'd like to have a, a figure for what they've saved over the first term. Uh, so we could use that in our advertising, you know, letting people know that the utility rate fluctuates, but ours uh, doesn't fluctuate and on average we were saving them money and uh, yeah so I think we should definitely uh, have an outreach campaign to encourage people to to go up to the 100 percent well plan. so if we could get those figures that would I think really be important well, I'll, because, okay I'll, I'll pester Patrick about it again yeah because member on Cohasset 143 people were starting to bid yes I know right and you know I think they'll they'll get going again so we can say aha you know <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah so if we can give them that and uh, um that information I think yeah let's get going on that on the upper right okay Okay, fabulous, fabulous news. Nice work, everybody, and keeping this going and staying on top of it. And Steve, for all of your championship of this. And um, oh, I, I should mention one other thing. We did have a discussion about uh, this. Was a the pre bid discussion was with the four towns, or the four towns went to, we all went together on. Uh, anyways, there was some discussion about uh, one or two towns were talking seriously about upping their uh, standard percentage, which they can do independently of, you know, us. But uh, I think here in Cohasset, uh, and we had, we discussed this at our last meeting a little bit too, that we feel more comfortable and just keeping it at 10% rather than trying to rock the boat, maybe. 
go up. So, I mean, we could still do it if there was a, you know, if I wanted to, but uh, that might put a little hurdle in the way, I'm afraid. But that's decided or it will be decided before they go out to bid? Uh, I think unless I get back to them tomorrow, <laughs> they're going to go out with the, the, the same plan, 10%. Okay. Steve, but, you know, I said, I asked them, I said, we're going to discuss this at the Alternative Energy Committee meeting on Thursday. And I asked them uh, if, um, if we, our committee, felt like we should uh, maybe raise it a couple of percent uh, if, if that would be okay. And he said, yeah, essentially. Keith, sorry, I, I didn't catch that. 10% of what? what uh... Uh, well, our standard plan is 10% more renewable energy than required by um, by the state RPS standard. Okay. No, not 10% more. It's 10 yes, percentage 10%. points higher. 10 um Yes, uh, right. 10 percentage, uh, 10 more percentage of the uh, uh, of the uh, power supply will be rec uh, class one Rex. That's what we have now. Yes. Yeah, what's the, what's the not, not 10 percent of what we have in our RPS, not adding 10 percent of the RPS Rex, but adding 10 percent of the entire power <laughs> being uh, uh, RPS. Um, it was the light green bar in the chart. Yes. Is it 24 percent versus <laughs> the, the light green bar on the chart I just showed you. The, the little one. Okay. The, the little bar on near the top. Right. <laughs> so in the, I think the last time that 10 percent seemed to have been set because that was the incremental renewables that would be the default and would be approximately around the price that National Grid would otherwise charge. Yes, yeah. So if we um, talk about increasing it, I guess I would feel uncomfortable doing that without understanding what the impact yeah, on Yeah, right, right. We have to work out be. the impact there. Yeah, that was our idea before, was to put as much in there as we could without exceeding the National Grid price. And that's pretty much what we, well, of course, we are way, way under. We could have put it on. <laughs> But, you know, average across the entire term, we were probably pretty close. Mm -hmm. Okay. Th does anybody have thoughts or opinions? Well, so Steve, did you do a calculation sort of with, with the ups and downs that uh, was uh, this an economically good decision to, to, to um, not opt out? I mean, not raise that ten percent. No, I'm, I'm going back to the previous time. A pre previous. Oh, thing. oh. Well, it was obvious that uh, that that we were on the good on the good side. Uh, but uh, like I say, it'd be nice to have the actual calculation done. The reason I know that is because we made money like gangbusters. Uh, you know, when, when the program went live, and then when uh, and then we lost a little bit. You can see on the chart. Unfortunately, I didn't make a copy of that one. Uh, we lost a little bit. Uh, the first summer there, um, because uh, National Grid lowered their price a little bit below ours, and but uh, now now we're making that back again. Uh, okay, so when you add it all up, with a longer with a longer stretch of time, so you know it's okay, obvious that we've made that um, people under our plan have made money over the national you know saved money over the National Grid price. Oh, but and I, the I, I tell us like how much. That. Yeah, no, I. As Debbie and I just said, it'd be nice if we knew exactly how much that was. Um, and I'll try to get if I can't if I can't get the uh, uh, good energy to calculate it for you, I'll calculate it myself. But it won't be as accurate because I won't know exactly what the production was, what the consumption but, but was for those different periods. You can just ca assume uh, one thousand kilowatt hours per month. Yeah, I can assume energy. I can assume a, a uniform you know a concept of. Uh, demand. Oh, I'm sure I can do that. Yeah, that's well, not. Is that the average? But, but I was hoping to get a more accurate number, <laughs> get the actual production numbers. Well, what or, sort of uh, interesting is sort of what a household would save, and as if a thousand is what a typical household in Cohasset consumes, that would be a great benchmark. 
And then yes, it would. Just to get out to everybody. Uh, so they know what a thousand looks like, and then they can pro rata it up or down. Yeah, and Debbie and I want to do that and and uh, rave about it and say, hey, why don't you go up to one hundred percent? Right, right, right. I mean, I feel like right now, obviously, it's too. I think it's too late and to to you know do anything beside the ten percent. But I think where we can get some leverage is showing that it's saving, and I mean. And even if we could figure out if 100% was saving, that was the thing because 100% was only a few pennies more than than the 10% over. It was only, yeah, it was only a, a penny more. Penny, yeah, a one, so, 1. So, 1.2 or something pennies more a so kilowatt. It, you know, so that, that other one, it will be an important figure to have too. Yeah. 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 Well, but I'll I see if I can get the accurate numbers from good energy and if I can't get then I'll do my best to come up with a number. Well, I, th I think even if you can get accurate numbers, having a 1,000 kilowatt hour or one megawatt hour per month calculation so that people could just ratio it however they wanted would mm -hmm. be helpful. Sure. How, how, how long do we have to tell them whether we want to increase it above 10%? Do we have to tell them by tomorrow? Oh, uh, why by didn't you tell me? I think I the answer is yes, because they're going out to bid next week. Yeah. It's, so it's too late to do it. it, it and, and we also can't, I don't, well, well see, we, the whole notice. We couldn't go without, without involving a town staff, you know, Chris and the select board maybe, right? I'm afraid. Yeah. Okay. So too late. All right. That's, um, and the thing is, it's not that, you know, we were on, they, they, really came to us out of the blue and said that the the time was ripe to go out but otherwise i think we could have if we could have anticipated this but yeah we didn't have any time you know they <laughs> good energy had their eye in the market and they saw it. the market was very favorable and they wanted to hop in and get it while the market was hot you know and so they they didn't really give us enough time to to do this i was talking to uh um, one of our friends in situate, and Lisa. Uh, Lisa, yeah, and she was disappointed too. You know, she would say, "Why couldn't we go up to twelve <laughs> percent?" <laughs> <laughs> She's even more of a, a lion on this than than you are, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> well, the two of us will go growl it out somewhere. <laughs> okay, so um. Great job. Thank you for the update. So the bids will go out next week and we'll find out at our next meeting where prices came in. Right. And I believe National Grid's price does not change until August of this year. I think they there, has, there has been a change in the way the utilities can, can uh, do their pricing. Um, they changed the date at which they they changed their pricing to try to to stagger a little bit the the higher price and lower price periods so that there's not such a huge jump. You know, the, the um, utilities are complaining that they their hands were tied and they had these big jumps, seasonal jumps. And so they've changed it. The state has changed the regulation a little bit so to reduce that. But on average, I don't think it'll make any difference. Okay. Great. All right, National Grid Program and MOU. Debbie in Montana. And Barbara. And um, Barbara. Yeah, so shall I? So I have the MOU here. Um, and I, anyway, so Tanya, shall I just sort of start at the get go about what, you know, what? They came to us, um, Barbara and I in Montana were uh, met with um, with um, someone from National Grid on this, what they call the Community Solutions mm -hmm. Program. And the cool thing is about this is apparently we were told um, that she is literally at, you know, like at the spoke of a wheel that she, we have access to almost every national grid program from her, she could get us into this. 
Um, but anyway, National Grid came to us. They want to have a partnership with us. Um, and so um, there's um, they they are going to. They're going to work with us, I think, a little on get, on the climate action plan. Um, they they basically want to work with us to, um, especially on town properties, to get them to net zero. Is you know, I mean, their their goal is to um, obviously um, reduce uh, usage, and um, so they want to get the um, the um so much here <laughs> but the, but they're also very interested it's a three-year program that we would sign up for we would sign a, a memorandum of understanding and basically we would set benchmarks about things that we wanted to programs that we wanted to undertake and um in in four or five different sectors municipal buildings multifamily small business residential we set these benchmarks over 3 years um measured you know basically every year if we they have access to the actual consumption of whatever we want so if we want to find out you know individual businesses or aggregates of housing or different things and we can compare, you know, from a certain point and then do, a, let's say, a program. And then we can figure out, a, you know, how much we've saved. And when we've saved, they're going to give us a cash amount per kilowatt hour. And I think it's, um, I they they had a, um, I think it was like 40 cents or 50 cents. Yes, um, 30, 32 for the first if you hit the first hurdle at 35 cents, wasn't it? Weren't, weren't those the numbers, Deb? I think so. The one I'm looking at that doesn't have the the numbers, um, but it's 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 substantial and it's hard cash. And um, I, you know, I we didn't get into who actually receives the cash, um, but anyway, um, yeah. So basically, it's a really exciting program where we can measure you know, are the impact of what we're doing, the educational programs and the, you know, and any kind of um, structural things that we do. Um, I think she jumped right on. I suggested the police station at that meeting, just sort of tossed it out. She jumped right on that. I mean, just right on that. But that seems logical. Brand new substation. They're going to be having to rip out everything. And, you know, it just made so hopefully that'll be a start. Um, our next meeting with her is May 21st. And uh, Tanya, you got an invite to that, right? And uh, so, I mean, I don't know whether we want to post this and let other people come or how how we want to do it. Because it is, to me, it's like one of the most exciting things ever is to have a partner with some money eager to help us. And of course, access to all these resources that we can use um and uh so and but we have to come up with the areas that we want to concentrate on and and i think some of the ideas of you know we'll work on on what the benchmarks are in these in the different categories you don't have to have projects in each category so let's say we do residential and small business or something and we we um you know, come up with things to get and the whole idea is to reduce consumption in gas and electric, both, both. And what did you say? The cash payment is 32 cents per what? Kilowatt hour. Yeah. And for gas, is it per MMBTU? It's a third. Or two, yeah. Two bucks, two bucks per therm and 250 per therm if you get to the next <clears throat> level of saving. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And there was no penalty, right, Deb? For no, no penalty. It it's an absolute win-win because there's no, there's no penalty. Um, you know, there's yeah. I mean, um, but obviously they, they are really eager to work with us. Debbie, yeah, um, are you going to send us the MOU so we can all see it? Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know, I because I, I, 
I feel a little funny. I think Tanya, you were supposed to be at that meeting, right? And you couldn't make it. So I, you know, so um, I don't know if, who wants to sort of take over the lead on this or how you want to handle this. Um, you know, I mean, I really am excited. I want, I'd love to work on it, but, <laughs> you know, I, I think that was one of the things I wanted to, we want to sort of strategize on tonight is just sort of spitball, maybe some ideas of some of the areas. So we, so when we have the meeting in, in May, it sounds like we've talked it over. We have some ideas. Um, and things like that. So, Debbie, can you pull up the MOU just so people can take a quick look at it? It's short. I have it if you want me to pull. Oh, the MOU. Yeah. Okay. You, you way, know what? Why? Why don't you, um, Barbara, pull up the her um, presentation? Yeah, we let talked me do about that. that. Yeah. Can I? Can you um, screen share? Can I just get in? Oh, okay, I got it. The MOU is actually about four or five pages. So. Yeah, so let's go through it. <clears throat> it's frozen for some reason. There we go. Okay. Do we have a minute to kind of? Just, yeah, can we? Let's, 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 yeah, let's we can maybe sit spend five it. minutes. So those are the categories that Deb just described, right? Um, that's the savings in the year one, two, three, based on a three-year MOU. She she has given us concrete examples of other municipalities and, and towns that have done it. She didn't give us the numbers, but she's one of them. I think it was Gloucester. I have it in here. Um, Barbara, I what's the benchmark it. number? I mean, what, 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 you, what usage year or month or season or how do they know where your starting is, point you know, is? First year is a, a, a town that saved 150. They wanted to save 150,000 kilowatts. They made it and their electric incentive was 48 grand. If you can see how it scales up over three years, 150, 175, 200, they saved 525,000 kilowatt hours. They got paid 168,000. And the same on the therms with gas. So it's but pretty big. I think um, what Chris is asking is how do you get a base year against which you can measure the savings? They provided it, right, Deb? They said that they would provide us with all of the data. Yeah, I mean, they, you know, they have access to everything, including all the mass save stuff. They can tell us who's actually had, you know, a mass save audit or who has solar. They can tell us the consumption of individuals or, or groups of things. So, the, so that's the benchmark is if we want to, let's say, increase the number of solar installations or something, you know, we can find out how many solar there are. We can, you know, um, there's all all different kinds of programs. See the community collaboration goals. These, uh, this is, I think we should look at this for a second. So, you know, um, small business, residential. Um, so, you know, it's it's basically you can set heat pump goals, but that's just an example. I mean, you can you can in each one of these sectors. You these are just some ideas of some of the goals that you might have, like like residential. It could be solar, or it could be heat pumps, or it could be just a, a you know a, a a number of things um, that added together means from this point forward to a you know another point. Um, we see if we've saved substantial usage, right? So. So Debbie and, and Barbara, they they took they do they once we say we're in, did they look at the, like the previous twelve months or something? We didn't drill down into all that, you know. I mean, I think what they would probably do is just give us. Well, it depends. I think they could just give us a number of where we, of a date. I think of you know the consumption at that date, and then we could compare, or or. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the The thought I had was, you know, so we obviously can look back five years in all the categories, but they because they've done Gloucester, they've done Lowell, and they did um, Beverly and Salem. Did we can also collaborate with another town, with Hingham or with Situate, um, and the numbers really 
Yeah, interesting. If they could show us how something, someone like Beverly did it, right? How did Beverly do it? What were their like five-year trailing usage? And then what did they benchmark in the MOU going out? They've already done this, right? They started in 2021. It ends in two months. So we can really get a great sense of how they benchmarked off of the trailing, whatever their usage was and how they succeeded. She said that they succeeded. She told us in the call. So I think that would be great if we could just get that data and pivot off of that and, and see see how they got their um, usage numbers, how they, how they did their forecast. The one thing they said about this is, it, I would just want to read this. It says, the parties recognize that the energy landscape will continue to evolve over the course of this three-year MOU and commit to working together to implement available programs and opportunities as they arise. So this is not static. Um, the parties have identified priority activities table below. So we we would identify the activities that where we would first begin, but we could, you know, modify or change as you know as new things come up. So it says priorities will be reassessed annually or as needed by the energy solutions team. Now there's going to be a monthly meeting. Um, you know, there's that's part of the the uh, MOU is that there's a single point of contact in our town and a monthly meeting. So, um, so it says here the MOU establishes a special offering of integrated technical, financial, and operational support by National Grid to the town owned portfolio of existing facilities. It also establishes goals and activities for engaging the Cohasset residential business and nonprofit community. So that's what we'll be asked to do is, and that's something that, you know, whether we, you know, we'll, we're gonna have to have a meeting or something and really set some of these goals. Um, and so, I think our committee should have, you know, a huge say in in what where we think the resources should be applied. Debbie, did they talk about the measurement and verification of the savings or the consumption reduction for different types of installations, or is it an educational program about, you know? Hey, turn your lights off when you leave the room, and and that creates consumption reduction. You know, because obviously there's give and take to overall residential and small business consumption. Like we talked about earlier, if if EVs start becoming more and more and more popular, then obviously the number of kilowatt hours is actually going to go up. Right. So how do they do the measurement and verification? And I think this is maybe a little bit of number crunching. We might need to think about that might help us decide which of these categories maybe we should really focus on. We want to get the ones that will get the most bang for the buck, right? Right. Of these right. categories on the screen. Yeah. You would think large commercial <clears throat> would deliver mm -hmm. right? if they can reduce because they're not going to have that big an EV fleet and they're just going to, you mm -mm. know, that, that Delta is, is big well, if they can reduce by 5%. <laughs> Because the kilowatt hours are the same. I mean, you get the same um, kickback. That's the right. Same incentive. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I mean, those are those are really good questions to to ask her. You know, how do you account for you know for uh, a transition to a technology that is going to you know take power? But um, I you know I I got the sense. I mean that they're they're completely tied in. Obviously, Mass Safe is. National Grid. I mean, so is so. I'm wondering whether they get they know from rebates and things like that who's got an EV mm -hmm. and, and and can work that in. So I think that's those are the kind of things that we should ask. And and those you know, if anybody has questions like that, or I mean, May twenty first, you know, I I. I think we, if people are wanting to, it's nine o'clock in the morning. Um, but if they want to, maybe we should post it, Tanya, you know, and let people come. I mean, if 
I, if they're as excited about this as I am, but. Maybe we can gather some data in the interim from their use cases of the towns yeah. that have done it. If they mm -hmm. share, they, she said she would share the data. She, she's very um, forthcoming and constructive. She really wants oh, to absolutely. play. Do you want to go to Gloucester and we could just look at that a second to see what. Go to Gloucester? That's, I mean, like a field trip? <laughs> no, no. Go to the Gloucester, go the to Gloucester, the Gloucester case study. Go to the Gloucester case study. <laughs> I, I was will like, say you can always Amanda. go to you can always go to Gloucester too. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I was thinking, yeah, we could we'll go and yeah. This and so they you can see the um they prioritized those goals on the right hand box. <laughs> right. So so it says some of the components, you know. But to Don Doran's point, it's the EVs and clean transportation. So somehow I don't know if you get a credit for that or how that works. <laughs> I think this is focused on energy efficiency, but I think Doran's suggestion about the data, if we could get the data in advance, but they might say we can only get the data if we sign the MOU, um, it would be helpful for us to know how many people have taken advantage of the Mass Save program. Do we have a high rate a or is that There's, looking in fruit? There was something like eight or right, six, seven, eight towns, Deb, and and one two no no she said the mass save program i think oh, mass save. want to I'm know sorry. how many like households and ha have taken advantage of mass save yeah. she could tell us that yeah yeah mm -hmm. and and just so you know the municipal buildings like the vast majority of the direct municipal load is tied to the schools followed by the water plant uh and the sewer plant so those would be the targets for the municipal load. Yeah. I, I And frankly, the police station is the size of a house. Their load is the size of a house. Mm. Well, totally. It was just, it was sort of a, she was looking for a project to start with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, something that was quick, it sounded like, you know, something that you we could make right. some inroads because it was under construction. So maybe what, um, I thought we had discussed this last meeting. Did we create a subcommittee for this? No. No. So maybe what we should do is see if there's somebody who wants to take the lead. I'm, I'm assuming Debbie and Barbara, you are busy with other initiatives. No, I want to be on this. <laughs> no, I want to be on this. We already, we already met, but became best friends with Amanda for Micah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But you'd like somebody else to be heart. the leader or would one of you like to be the leader? Barbara, would you like to take the lead on this initiative? I'm happy and... to, but as long as Deb is my wing person, because I don't do anything without Deb, as you'll oh. find I'm highly <laughs> codependent. I will be your wing. Uh, I'll be your wing person. Okay, Unless, so you know, me... I mean, are there some other folks on here that? I, I would say. I, I, I'm 100% in guys okay. i would love to help out with this one you know i just think uh, you know despite the the need to find out more about the data and how they go about doing the measurement the the approach that they're taking to you that you're describing here and even the the wording of that mou it it sounds like a really like a no-brainer it is a no-brainer for the town with the mon amount of money like that that they that's just huge and the access to data, that's the other thing. Yeah. And then of course, you know, if we mm -hmm. if we can um, you know, become very well, if they're gonna provide they're gonna make a support, lot of money. I mean, yeah. These programs that are run by the utilities too, they they've they've already pre selected contractors oftentimes. They, you know, they can literally lead us to the trough. Yeah. The climate action plan was also interesting. I don't want to belabor this because I know we're we're trying to stay on schedule. But we asked her specifically, so we said, well, what do you mean you assist in a climate action plan? Can you provide funding? She said, Well, if we don't, we can we can connect you. We we have worked with a lot of municipalities <laughs> and towns on creating a climate action plan. And they've helped pay for it, or they've gotten funding, which is really interesting. It was for us. So 
and you know, we spoke offline with you, Tanya. They they have the National Grid seems to have a gun to their head to reduce consumption of electricity. So this is um this is playing in our into our hands. Okay, so this is great. Barbara, we have you as the lead of this subcommittee with your um right hand woman and right hand man being Debbie and Doran. And um this is great. I'd like to this join the meetings too, if I can. I don't know if I want to be an official member. So uh, the challenge, Chris, is if the fourth joins. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. I withdraw, I withdraw that comment. Unfortunately. Um, which then becomes a quorum. But I think let's do this. Let's plan on having a, as makes for effective committees. Let's plan on having the subcommittee put together sort of a straw proposal or brainstorm initially or come up with an approach on based on information you found on what your findings, your research has found, bring it back to the committee and we can brainstorm, add ideas or other things. And then you can shoot it down or say, well, we found out this or we found out that or here's what we think and here's why. So I think that would be the task for the subcommittee to do. And then you uh, can meet as many times. Of course, the three of you could participate on that um, May 21st. I don't have to be on it if the committee would like to take the lead on that um, for fear of making a quorum. Um, but I'm also obviously happy to assist. However, I think having Doran on the committee provides the same level of industry expertise that um, I would be able to provide probably even better because my focus isn't necessarily on the energy efficiency side of things. Does that sound okay? Send around the data when you get it. I'd like to take a look. Yeah, and send the data. So yeah. Chris can be um, the quant jock of the team, if you'd like. Yeah, Have him uh, analyze the data when you get the data or provide the uh, supporting uh the supporting muscle without it's just be aware of the meeting issue if there's a quorum you have yeah, to Tanya, so we can we can do a one-way communication of data to the entire list yep provided that we avoid any uh email discussion yeah right? no email discussion administrative or yeah. transference of data is fine and if you okay. sent the data to chris and he did calculations and wanted to talk to a member of the subcommittee or you know, mm -hmm. work with a member of the subcommittee on that, then that member of the subcommittee could report back to the subcommittee and with the entire yep. group, Chris could present on it. So the way Great. it was explained it is that any data, any, you know, that it has to go through and now Montana's not gonna be there. So we have to have somebody very quickly take your position, Montana, so we can, you know, um, because they could only give it to her. And then obviously the MOU uh, is going to have to be signed, I guess, by what Chris Senior. And so we're going to have to go through that too. So do we want to vote now that we want to participate in this so we can get, you know, so at least we're on record? And we vote to recommend the who, 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 who has the authority to uh, decide whether we do this or not. Or well, advisory. It has to be signed. The MOU, the, is this a relationship, you know, uh, there's a lot of, there's different. Well, uh, right. So first of all, external counsel has to review this. I don't think we can vote to sign the MOU at this point. Oh, no, that's also, not what I asked. Okay. So what are you asking? Would we like to- I'm asking if we wanted to, to support the effort, you know, that, that, that we want to recommend this. Uh, that we want recommend to what? That we want to participate in this program and um, recommend, and that we will, um, I don't know, I, I, that we would like to participate in this program and something about request that the MOU be signed, or um, I, I think we just need to have some sort of formal vote that we are supporting this program and that we will. Well, we're creating a subcommittee. So that gives us the ability to learn more information. I think there's some steps. 
I wouldn't feel comfortable voting on an MOU until the council has reviewed it and until we've identified the projects that we'd want to include in the MOU. Doesn't the MOU have blanks on what projects we're going to we, pursue? Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> this, is just, this is just that basically the sense of the committee that we want to move forward. I mean, it move forward with, well, never mind. I, I withdraw it. We'll wait. <laughs> well, Debbie, I think I, mean, I, I, I think, think, uh, I, think just... I think I think uh, look, I think we we certainly think that we should be exploring this. Uh, the the May twenty first meeting um, is kind of one step. The next step is gathering data, making sure to get that data through and then out to the committee. And then I think we potentially then are in a position to talk about whether this committee is kind of putting forward it as a recommendation to kind of support negotiating the MOU, figuring out which sectors we're going to go after, helping the town kind of implement something, right? It, it feels like we might be a touch early. Yeah, I think you're, uh, I guess you're right. I just wanted to, you know, just sort of say that we're behind the, the concept of this, I guess, is, is basically it. Well, but if you need... You want to say something is to to back to her. You can say you had the discussion here, and we're all very enthusiastic about learning a lot more. Yeah, we formed a subcommittee to explore oh, subcommittee, right? So all good. I subs. would also like to add that I brought this up to Michelle um, the other day, and she is in support of this initiative. But she, just we need to further investigate like the details, basically, and she wants to see success stories from other cities. I, th I think, um, I mean, we can most certainly do a vote of support to pursue more as I think the establishment of a committee creates a subcommittee creates that um, message. But if you'd like something explicit, Debbie, like a official committee blessing to the subcommittee to pursue this. Yeah, that's uh, that's all I wanted. I obviously not any kind of commitment for the MOU. That's not even in our purview. It's basically that we just, as a committee, we vote you you know hopefully unanimously to uh, to pursue you know to form the subcommittee to research this. Where okay, so why don't we do that? Take a vote if we want to officially create a subcommittee as a means of sending a signal of support. Um, we don't necessarily have to vote to do a subcommittee, but if we want to do that as a means of providing a message that we're excited about this and we want to learn more and we're enthusiastic and optimistic, most certainly I would entertain a motion to establish a subcommittee tasked with further exploration of the National Grid Program, the MOU, and potential projects that uh, would be included in the MOU for purposes of energy efficiency and other uh, energy savings. I move to do just what you said. I can't, write that fast enough. <laughs> I can't write that fast enough. <laughs> Martha, put down your best and, and I can- uh... down? Okay. Thank you. Use my so, word. All right. A move to establish a subcommittee to pursue further exploration of the National Grid Program and MOU tied to energy efficiency and energy savings for the town. Great. Thank you. Okay, that was moved by Barbara. Do I have a second? Me, Debbie. Debbie seconds. Is there any discussion? Okay, we'll do a roll call vote. Chris Adlis and I. Martha again, Jimmy, I. Leonard, I. Debbie Cook, I. Doran Hall, I. And Tanya Bodell, I. Excellent, passes unanimously. Go forth. Learn more. Let us know how we can help. Feel free to send information. 
you have resources available uh, in the form of all of us, but specifically on the data and data analysis, Chris is ready to go. And um, this is a very exciting time and a very exciting opportunity. Hey, hey, I just said I wanted to look at the data. I'm not going to be a full blown analyst here. I'll, I'll point on it in an observation, but don't expect a full report. <laughs> Thank you, Tanya. Debbie, you mind sending me the info on the, the morning of the 21st meeting? Um, yeah, I, I don't think we have anything yet. Montana, yeah. did you get a notice of the a, a link to the no. meeting? We haven't finalized the meeting yet, but I'm already writing up a summary of what Amanda and I have discussed individually, okay. as well as Michelle. And then Debbie, you can send the presentation and the MOU and the chain. Yeah, I'll, I will. I will send it. I'll right. send that to everybody. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So the presentation and the MOU. Okay. Okay, fabulous. Um, what I'd like to do is move up in the agenda. Chris, do you want to talk about the data? Yeah, it's pretty straightforward this month. Uh, we have data for final data for April. I forwarded this chart to Martha. She'll include it in the minutes. Interestingly, the number of unique drivers went up. Can you bring uh, it up on the, can you do it as a share? Uh, can I do it as a share? Hold on a second. Um, okay, got that. Everybody see it? Yep. All right, so you did a couple of th interesting things. Number of unique drivers are up but the number of sessions are basically flat. Uh, and the, um, uh, let's see, how do I get rid of you guys here? Uh, there we go. Uh, and um, down here, this is always fun to see how many trees we saved. <laughs> and uh, the session fees are just slightly up between March and April. And you see the energy usage slightly up between March and April. So uh, I think that, I mean, I think the the, the trend of, of us um, diminishing since we started adding fees, you can't really see anymore because I think it's in the past here. We were, we were higher in the past. Is there a recovery happening? I think we were out of 100 unique drivers before. Yeah, we recovered. We're back to ninety-three. So we're about. I I don't I don't have the data that goes back to. Didn't we start charging around uh, late last year? Yes, September. Yeah. So when I re reported, I, we we had saw significant down ticks from pre-charge mm -hmm. to post-charge. So mm -hmm. uh, I I don't think we've recovered back to pre-charge. Okay. The fortunate thing is we have excellent meeting minutes <laughs> that include usually this chart. So if we went back to our meeting minutes, we should be able to identify the trend. But right, I'll take there's that. some recovery. We're not sure it's a complete recovery. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll take that. I'll go back to the meeting minutes. With this 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 chart, I right when um uh oh my gosh, I'm brain brain broke. The fellow who used to look after this, um, Josh, Josh, um, yeah, Josh. He says getting the past data was was difficult. So, but I'll, if it's embedded in the meeting minutes, I can take a look. I'll take I'll take that on. I'll do that. Yeah, I'm looking at the meeting minutes now, and I'm trying to figure out where. When do oh, we yeah. start Is it September? Um, right. So if we look at, I can, yeah, and it's not going to be dynamic. I'll just pull up uh, November's meeting minutes. Do I stop sharing? Oh, uh, unless you wanted to report more. No, that's it. Okay. So I'll just quickly pull up share screen.
and meeting minutes. Where is that? I don't know if I'm going to be able to share these. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to share these. I'm having, oh, no, 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 no. I can get it. Um, sure. All right. It's from our excellent meeting minutes in November. And what you can see, forget November, because that's a partial month, but this was the trend that Chris was reporting on. <clears throat> we had over 100 unique drivers, uh, almost a peak in August. And then it went down to around 100 in October. And November was a partial month. So that's deceptive. Um, so most certainly we were at above 100. I think we might have even gotten close to 130 maybe when we were not charging. So we've not recovered to those levels, but we have recovered to where October was. And these Close. sessions, take a look at this number of sessions, 450. And let me, uh, hold on a sec. Uh, the sessions now are in the 200 and, uh, 250 range. So we've, the sessions have dramatically decreased. Mm -hmm. I attribute that to the Steve Winter effect. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. The Debbie Cook effect as well. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, can you show you where the where the where's the power usage? Uh, can you uh, do you have that in in there? Um, in my down? screen still looks like a little bit of a di yeah. In your screen, you know, we were. Okay. Yep. Let me see if I can go down. Oh, it doesn't look like they included in this. Uh... Oh. All right. So um, hmm. Doesn't look like they included that in the dashboard, but okay. I, I would imagine the power usage was is down too. Yep. Oh, and you can see the session fees. Um, which is hard to tell. It's in thousands, but we don't know what the number is. The session the session fees. Yeah, on the dashboard itself, you, you can act, they, they pop up, but I can't get to those yeah. past ones. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop sharing. I'll quickly, since we're doing the data, share uh, the savings of our lovely solar energy array. If I can find it. Uh, let me pull back up. Okay. I think I have to download. So give me a moment if you could. All right, so now I'm going to share my screen. I think I may have sent this around. So we continue to save money. Um, we are sort of on track to an average year, which would make sense because prices have settled down. Uh, but as you can see, year to date through April, we have saved the solar energy array on the landfill has saved the town almost $20,000. And I think you can see how very helpful the solar energy array was for 2023 when we almost saved $100,000 for the year. And I think the original estimate was we would save maybe 45 to 55,000 per year. So we are above the estimates, which is nice. 
Uh, and we may hit the, probably not by the end of this year. I was hoping we'd be able to hit the half a million dollar mark by the end of this year, but it's probably going to be into the middle of next year. But still, I mean, again, this is 10% of the town's usage. We could have been at $5 million of savings if we had been able to get enough solar energy in place. And unfortunately, the roofs were not ready. And a lot of the other places that we were looking for were not ready, but we tried. It's not for lack of trying. <laughs> um, since 2013, we have been trying to do more. Okay, excellent. Can I, so, can I share my screen one more time? Yes. Uh, I did find something that I hadn't seen before. Hold on a second. Uh, okay, so this is the last 365 days mm -hmm. and the number of sessions. This mm -hmm. is this is September right, right on here. So you can see this is where we're probably on average number of sessions pre-charge and here's average number of sessions post-charge. It's pretty, pretty interesting there. Hmm. Can you download the data underlying this? Uh, looks like export. I can, yes, I can download and that's the image text summary. I'm not sure I can download the data. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, CSV. Uh, the text CSV is going to be data in a common delimited file. All right, great. Yep, I can do that. Okay, why don't we just save that so we have. This is important data to be able to share because one of our recommendations for putting a charge in was to understand how the elasticity of demand responded. I'm going to send this to you, Martha. Thank you. Okay, and it also gives us data to ask the question whether $15,000 per level three charger is worth it to the town. Um, so I had invited Michelle to come and present to us. She said she'd be interested in doing that. And I did not unfortunately follow up uh, with her on her schedule to see if she could participate tonight. But I did ask, I, I did um, respond to her. She sent the information and said, what do you think? I said, well, this is something for the committee to examine, um, but, and, and referred her to our February meeting minutes where there was a description of the discussion where we talked about understanding the need for the chargers and the strategy behind that. And I also um, said it was hard to assess the $15,000 cost without understanding the strategy or the benefits that would come from that. And suggested that she consider coming to the committee and letting us know some of the details so that we could have a discussion. And hopefully we would still have time to do that, although I suspect it's been included in the budget. Somebody have a contact person at charge point I can call so I can get more data. That is a black hole. There is a number you can call. We don't have a direct point person anymore. Um, you're going to wait on the phone for a really long time, but someone will answer your phone call at some point. Hmm. They are very difficult to track down. Do we have an account? Do we know our account number? I guess we do. Can you can you Montana send me any information you have? And somehow and maybe sort of I don't know what authority I have to ask for data, but maybe an account number or something. You have the authority of the Alternative Energy Committee, <laughs> responsibility for the data. Yeah. And whatever information on the account number you might have from the data you have access to. I know I have 100% support for everybody on this Zoom call. It's just the guy on <laughs> the other end of the phone. So, um, can I ask about the, or the, the level three, do you know anything about the level three chargers? I mean, 
the specs or whether they're the the Tesla, you know, so they're not, compatible or I mean uh, I, they're not Teslas. They are compatible. Okay, Um that's that's big. yeah. Um we don't know she doesn't know where they're going right now. That hasn't there's been ideas tossed around. They're not replacing any ones, they're just additional new ones. And that is about all I have for you at the moment. I mean, I think level three is, you know, I, obviously it shows up on, in your car. It will bring people to cohasset. So I think level three is a big draw, um, but it just depends on on how, you know, um, I guess where we put them and, and uh, but, you know, that that's a that's a big draw. And I think if especially down in in any place like, um, you know, um, a shopping center or downtown would be important in commercial areas. So it's unclear whether these are for public use. Are we going to charge? Or are they for the town's municipal use? What are we, what are they for? Public, right? It's for, it's, it's at the school. It's at uh, tennis well, court. That's the current one. That's a, those are the current yeah, ones. I don't one think we know level what three. level three are to be used for. We haven't received a presentation on this or any information. Uh, I don't we, we might want to we might want to ask the Hingham people what their experience has been with their level three charger. It's down down on the um, you know where the fruit market is there in that uh, parking big parking area. Something that Michelle and I did discuss that maybe this can be food for thought for the next month or so is because we've had a slight decrease in users, maybe considering the um, amount we charge per minutes or something like that, since we're getting more chargers, but we've seen a decrease in usage, just to think about that um, before they're installed. Yeah, but level three, people will, will drive to them. Level, level two, no. But level three, you know, people will find them and there's not a lot around. So, you know, I mean, they, they will be a draw. It's a very different situation. But the point is what? Is the point, it's not to generate revenue, it's to attract business to town. Is that the concept? Is that why they wanted it? I know it's a fundamental question, but is that it? From my understanding, they received a really good deal on these three chargers and Perfect. there was no intention originally of getting them. I don't even think that we were like prospecting them before they just landed on our laps, basically. It's still, I'm still, it's a head scratcher to me, you know, because we know that 90 plus percent of all residential <clears throat> charging is done at home. And so people would only, we would only do it if, if, um, the the shop owners and Shaw's and Stop and Shop think it's a jolly good idea. Right. Well, Stop and Shop already has two chargers. Has anybody seen those? No. They have, but they're not level three though, are they? I don't know what they are. Yeah, that, that's then it's a two hour phenomenon and there's no place to go. <laughs> it is. You're there for the <laughs> I mean you, you don't want to be in for... stop and shop for two hours. Yeah. I mean someone must have have a clear idea as to why there's such enthusiasm for chargers in town. Now, they supposedly do have a useful life of 10 years. The potential locations based on National Grid's approval for power are Government Island, the library, Millican Park, Sandy Beach, and Town Hall. And the maintenance, in addition to the $15,000 up front, the maintenance is $3,600 a year per location. So if you take that 15,000 divided by 10, you know, you're talking about 5,000, $5,100 plus per year per charger. Hmm. So Sandy Beach is what another the, head scratcher. Why in the world? Oh, that would be What horrible. was the first, sorry, what was the Why? first location, Tanya? Government, Government Island. That's where the Harbor Master is. Sandy oh. Beach, Town Hall, and where else? 
the library. So Government Island, that uh, I'll give some elaboration. I would expect that would be for electric boats, if there are electric vehicles coming down to the sailing club, the or if there are electric vehicles used commercially, the library, which already has four chargers, in the two in the front, two in the back, and limited parking spaces, and a condition that they can only be installed there if anybody can park there. And Millican Park, I don't know where Millican Park is. The ball fields, right? Okay, so the ball fields. Mm. Sandy Beach, that would be for people who are obviously going to the beach. And Town Hall. Anybody going to the beach two months of the year? Well, right. not only that, Chris, but they're all residents. I mean, right. I can't imagine not. Oh, I forgot to charge my car. I know. Go to well, the beach. I just yeah. think about all the salt and all of the, the, I know. It doesn't... the damage. It seems like these a lot locations. Of... I'm sorry. Were these were these the ones where National Grid was saying that they were approved locations? I think these were um, approved. I, I, maybe even suggested by National Grid because this is a National Grid program mm. based on National Grid's approval for power. Yeah, which might have to do with the infrastructure required to hook up one of those level threes. Mm -hmm. You know, the the sort of just the the electrical infrastructure. Yeah. <clears throat> um, well, I agree. Sandy Beach is a head scratcher. It's like, you know, like you said, all residents the the charger itself isn't going to last 10 years with the weather there so so town um, hall was meant was that parking lot where yeah. you know where it's close to the commercial area i mean that's the thing when you're at a level three you want to be able to go get a cup of coffee or something like that mm -hmm. so you know it seems to me like town hall um any place where there's you know a place that you can find a bathroom or something like that so the town park was the town parking lot at one of those sites. No, or we already have. That, a level two yeah, charger. that makes sense, Steve. That would make the most sense. If yeah, you're not only is it near near uh, you know the village and all the facilities in the village, but also it's near some uh, apartment houses and so forth, where people would have to charge uh, somewhere other than where they live. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then the other place is probably up near the um, train station, maybe. That, you know, there's that it that area up there, but that's not town on land, I guess it but that would make sense. It's right off 3A and you've got the shopping area right, you know, you can walk right yeah. there from the uh train. Okay. Just to time check, Chris, um I know you, you need to drop off at nine. But yes. thank you for participating. And this will probably be another half hour. And um, I think we've had good discussion. But right. we'll just keep going and try to finish by 930 at the latest. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everybody. So long. Bye. Bye. Okay. So, again, I think, you know, I said it's hard to assess. Uh, the costs seem high. 5000 a year per charger. We're not going to make that back. We're going to make it back. I'm charging, I don't think. Um, but it'd be good to get some information about other level three chargers that are on the South shore and what happens with them. I don't know if charge point would have that information or tests. I don't know. I don't know if there's some way to get that information, but that would be a good indicator because I agree with Debbie that the level three is different. Oh, totally. That could attract people coming in. And then if there's an economic piece to it, you know, there'd be, a, a rationale for that, but most certainly locating it in areas in the far corners of the town does not meet that objective. Uh, on the other hand, we're limited to town property. But again, I think these are all considerations and it would be very helpful to understand. Michelle did say she has not done a cost benefit analysis, nor has anybody asked for it. Um, but I, you know, my point was not a cost benefit analysis. It was just helping us to understand even qualitatively what the benefits are, the strategy that we'd be trying to achieve. 
So it seems to me, unless we have some answers, that this maybe should be postponed, you know, at town meeting until. I, that's out of our hands. We don't control what's on the warrant. Well, but budget. we could suggest yeah. that <laughs> it's, it's, it doesn't seem to, you know, to make sense and rather seeing it go down in flames. Um, I think, you know, maybe we could suggest that they might postpone it. And at some point, ask for them be, to postpone it. I mean, there might be a timing issue on the funding. I don't know. Um, I, th I think, again, it'd be best if Michelle came before us and explained sort of the logic behind it. And at, I would hope there'd be an alternative energy committee vote in the warrant um, on this, unless it's buried in the budget, in which case there wouldn't be. And then if we're asked about it, as we already talked about this last time, I'm unable to attend the town meeting, but it, I suspect somebody may ask alternative energy committee about this uh, if it's separated out. And if it is, we don't have a comment at this point. That's a bad look. I know, again, I just, we've been asking for more information on this for four months. If you go back to our meeting minutes, it's there starting at least in February, maybe even before. Okay, let's move on. Um, electric school bus, we don't have data on that yet, but we're hoping that during our monthly meetings, the same way we report on the solar energy array and the car chargers, that we would have information on electric school bus. Have they been using it? Uh, they've been driving it around. They've been using it for training. Uh, they are not, they haven't rolled it out yet for the kids is my understanding. They want to get used to it first and make sure they um, have practiced and, and get a feel for how it works. But I suspect before the end of the school year, they'll take it for a spin on some of the routes. It's and, very and the, it's so nice to see all the, the publicity. You know, oh, my gosh. There was so much publicity, wasn't there? First one on the South Shore. It's just it's just great. Good job. I, I have to say it was a great event. We do have. Um, uh, we do have. Let's move to the next agenda item. So we're back up. Um. Update on 2024 initiatives. So if we could get a report out from the education committee, uh, update on anything we're doing on solar and the microgrid equipment at schools and proposed changes to the zoning bylaws. And these can be just status reports if there's no content to report. Debbie, do you wanna talk about your first? Yeah. My what? Oh, Your oh my first first, well, education session. Education. You were there, I, you know, so I guess I don't have anything to report. That's all. And Barbara has has stepped up, you know, and is going to um, help do, do some sort of program content um, and stuff on on future ones. So we're we're already talking about, you know, what we're going to get for the heat pump. Um, and the person that I thought that I was going to get, um, I went to their web page and they were fighting everything we stood for. So I, you know, who was that, that was, um, yeah. um, Williams energy who we had at the electric, you know, the electric home thing at EcoFest. And, uh, so we're going to, we're sort of going to the drawing board and finding uh -huh. some, if you would like. Uh, there is a geothermal company called Subterra. They're a Canadian company that is coming into the United States. They provide district heating systems. So geothermal, um, they're heat pumps, but they're geothermal systems and they're meant for multi-building campuses. And they can talk about that. It's not on a um, house by house basis, but much more sort of on a campus basis. 
Mm. Like, yeah, maybe town common yeah. or a school, multi-building school or large commercial. Well, good to know. I think, um, yeah, we'll, we will um, see. Um, we'll take it under advisement. Yeah, I was just going to say, take it under advisement because I know I think, you're focused on residential. Yes, yeah, residential. I don't know too many places that would fit the bill. Um, so, yeah, so, so anyway, that's the education. Um, okay. Great. Um, solar, we're going to do a pass on that just because we have that as a placeholder for things. The schools keep looking at replacing the school roofs. They're up and they seem very open to uh, making sure that the school roofs, when they are replaced, are replaced in a way that would support solar. Um, I also heard from Secretary Tepper today that they're revamping the Clean Peak Energy Standard for batteries. And so that might create some additional incentives to include batteries, which I think at the size we're talking about for the schools, we would need to anyway, but it might defray some of the costs. So we'll stay tuned on that. Um, proposed changes to the zoning bylaws. Yes, we had our first meeting Wednesday. It was great. Um, Doran um, has a lot of information, contacts, and he's going to find us some local regional manufacturers and installers to get really good information from so that we can make um, some informed decisions. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Great. Thank you for having that. We do need meeting minutes, so. I, oh, um, you have them. I sent them to you yesterday. Oh, okay. So, but uh, the committee will need to approve them and then we can send them along. Okay. So I'll take a look and then send them back for the next committee meeting to approve, subcommittee meeting to approve. Should I send the, I mean, I've sent them to the subcommittee already. Do mm -hmm. I just get their approval then? No, you're going to have to do a meeting. The next well, meeting. Oh, at the next meeting. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, great. Climate leaders, communities. How are how many responses do we have on the climate action survey? We have two hundred and sixty-eight. And Barbara, are you going to show some of the responses? Sure, sure. Let me do that. I, I mean, we're not done yet, and maybe, and what no. we did want was a little feedback about when we should wind it up. I mean, two sixty eight is probably respectable. I was going to meet. You know, we're at two sixty eight. That's great, Deb, because last time I heard it was one sixty. Yeah, no, two sixty eight. We are, but I and I was going to meet with the green team next week, but they canceled, and they were going to help get, um, you know, their parents and. And uh, so, and, and the kids were going to do it. And I said, if kids do it, it would be nice if they put either their age or their grade, because I think they're, you know, they're, they obviously have a very different perspective. So I said, kids are absolutely welcome to do it, but it would be great with name, with um, not names, but um, age or, or grade. So, yeah, so that's where we stand. So Barbara was going to, I can Don't share worry. what what I've been doing is I've been creating a deck to to so that Tanya can take it to the um, town meeting and say that we have critical mass in survey responses and share the survey responses. So I've been spitballing on this a little bit. Hold on, I'm going to share my screen. I'm very excited about this. Ready? Okay, so our goal, and this is kind of made up and I'm trying to get everybody's response. I figured that we could say we have critical mass because we have 8,500 individuals in Cohasset, right? 3,393 houses, 80% are owner occupied. Our climate initiatives, right? We're focused on homeowners because we're looking at how to reduce per home. Yes, and commercially, but we're really focused on homeowners and that's what the survey is all about. So if we have critical mass, we need 339, we're already pretty much there, right? 
the, this is the really exciting part. <clears throat> so we, we, we think we'll get to 3.30, 3.39. Here, this is, I just took a couple of pages. Um, <clears throat> it's We have 84%. <laughs> are you concerned about climate change? 84% are either very concerned or pretty concerned, right? You know, on the spectrum, it was one to five with one being very, the, the three mm -hmm. biggies, right? This one was, do you think climate change will have an impact on your family? 78% are either very or pretty much, right? And then the the other ones, the the you know, what what are you concerned about? It ran the gamut, but you know, lots of enthusiasm for things that are worrying them. And this is a big one too. Do you think it's important to have a climate action plan? Well, 82% were in those two categories of important. So we're really, you know, we're, we just need 50 more. And I just think that that combined with where we are in terms of trajectory of getting a climate action plan, even talking to National Grid, getting help looking at Hingham, I feel very optimistic that we the survey has borne great fruit. Great. And do you have um, the comments or the comments? I know, I guess my question yeah, is, do we have comments that are adverse to it as well as ones that are few. very supportive? Oh, a few. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I yeah. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, the only Every other one. Every comment has been written down and there were a couple of ones, uh, you know, because the, the paper top, uh, more I think have come in on paper, 143 on paper. So, um, so I some I think some of the people actually didn't read it, and and so that they reversed. You know, they went from least concerned to most concerned, which mm -hmm. it was the opposite. Now I took this from a lot of this from Hingham. That's how they added, but but based on the the following answers, it seemed very clear that they were concerned. So. You know, but I left it exactly as as everything that was on the paper went in the in the form. So, so uh, yeah. So that yeah. is, uh, and one of the things that they kept that they said that more than you know is um, that they need more information. That was something that I felt very vindicated on because they they did you know, say that um, a problem with climate change is there's just not enough information. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I don't know what that really means, but this was another big one, right, Deb? 40% of respondents want to be involved. They want to go to meetings in person, Zoom, or attend workshops, and half of them are, want to be on a committee. So I think that is indicates a robust interest in a cap. What do you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, and but you know, to the group, to me, cap. This is about this to me is everything, right? Climate action plan means we're on our trajectory. I know I'm not advocating for anything. I'm just saying that the numbers are in, and the numbers are powerful. People aren't thinking. Nah, I don't know. So right, we're not getting that. We're getting powerful results back, which is heartening, to say the least. Yeah, I think um, if everybody agrees, I'll ask the select board to get on the agenda for a quarter two report, and these results will be in that. And uh, I would ask that we be put on the agenda for the first meeting first after meeting. the town meeting. Okay. And now might be something when we bring up the MOU or then too? I think that's when we bring up a lot of things. I think specialized, that... Specialized uh, uh, code, building code. Yep, yep. which is next. Um, but I think the whole, the climate action plan, which is part of a larger climate leaders program and the specialized opt-in code, which we have already voted on, but that's also part of a larger climate leader communities program. So I think, again, we can think about how we present it, but I would 
suggest we prepare something that incorporates these results in. It's going to be a big ask, and it's going to come after the town meeting, but it's going in a direction that I think we anticipated. And um, the only other thing would be if we feel as a committee we want to discuss it, we'll be able to discuss it before we present to the select board. And I think positioning and marketing and, and why, what are all the reasons why we as a committee, given all the research we have done, including the climate action survey, which just confirms some of what we were already seeing. I, th I think I'm incredibly impressed at the strong showing on the survey. Um, and we've put it on 143, correct? Mm -hmm. I think it's on 143. A couple of times, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we'll have a whole list of where we put it, right? I just, I don't want there to be any doubt that anybody who was against it had, did not have the opportunity to say so. Um, because these are such overwhelming results in one direction, right? That um, I just want to make sure it's clear how we collected the data. Yeah, yeah well, some of the negative ones were in the library. We were, had boxes mm -hmm. in the library and at Wilcott Commons. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, one thing I did want to say is that there was a strong, I mean, you know, a huge percentage of people felt as far as actions to be taken that a stronger building code was, was essential. So that will be an important case to make too. So we've got some things to make some of our cases. Well, this is great. This is great. And I think that we'll have our next meeting next. to be able to think about, maybe we'll do a mock-up of the presentation and walk through it and then people can provide comments. I don't want to spend a ton of time on it, but I think that this is uh, what, this could be one of the most important presentations to the select board that we've made since the community aggregation program. Because this is a very real ask for action. Okay. Excellent work. Specialized opt-in code. Steve, is there anything we need to discuss on this? Uh, no, uh, except I've been noticing getting a lot of e uh, email thread from the Hingham people and uh, zerocarbonma.org and uh, the Hingham, and they're going, you know, the, the net zero, Hingham net zero are going full blast to lobby uh, Hinghamites to um, pass the specialized code. And they're getting a lot of help from uh, uh, zerocarbonma.org. Uh, so okay. anyways, and I have heard of several communities now that have gone through the process and uh, got got the uh, specialized code approved by their um, by their town councils or by their uh, town meeting. And they've had very little, very little opposition, in some cases, unanimous votes on, on going forward with it. So it looks very encouraging. OK, great. Great. All right, events. Um, we've got 10 minutes. I think we can finish by 9.30. And I appreciate it because I know these are now three hour sessions when we include the amazing education program as well as this, but I think we're doing this the right way. And I think that the, and, and you know what, the next person who comes in may not need us to be doing Thursdays before the meetings. We'll, we'll just, the education program can decide when we wanna do these. But I appreciate everybody's steadfastness and um, longevity on Thursday nights when we meet. All right, events. So we have the Springtown meeting June 3rd, 2024. Uh, it is just a gr it's a strong showing when committees show up. The advisory committee sits at the front. The select board sits at the front. The capital planning committee sits together in like the first or second row, usually to the right facing the stage. We usually sit in the second row behind the school committee on the left facing the stage. So it's it usually very important to do a good show. 
Um, as much as committees are allowed to do reports at the beginning, I think we won't be ready to do a full report, but at the fall town meeting, when there are a number of warrant articles, we would want to do a report uh, or we'd want to make sure that we do a presentation on what we're asking the town to vote on. But this time we do not have any warrant articles or anything that we're uh, supporting, but I would encourage everybody on the committee to attend the town meeting. Uh, and again, the second row on the left facing the stage is generally where we sit. And I unfortunately will not be able to be there in person. I'm gonna be at a partner's meeting down in Atlanta, uh, unfortunately, but hopefully people can attend. Uh, any questions about the Springtown meeting? What time does it right. start? Whew. So that's a good question. And I don't even, I think it's up there. It always starts at seven, doesn't it? Seven. Thank you. I'll look it up right now. Cohasset. I have it down at seven o'clock in my calendar. Seven at the gym. Okay. So the high school gym. Mm -hmm. Seven o'clock. Um, yes, and the warrant and meeting minutes are there on the website. So June 3rd, annual town meeting, seven o'clock at the gym. Okay, fabulous. Earth Day and town cleanup. Uh, that was on April 27th. Do, does anybody... Too bad Chris is not here. Chris was a beast on getting surveys done. Um, Debbie, do you want to give an update on your amazing presentation and what we were able to achieve? Uh, no, I mean, Tanya came, Chris came. Tanya and I got a chance to talk for quite a while and, and about this national grid thing and sort of went off on tangents. Um, which was really, you know, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, no, it was, uh, it was, it was good. And there was, there were a lot, it was um, a lot of young couples there, um, not for the cleanup, but they were there for, um, I think it was the baseball, you know, opening parade. And so we were able to go and get a lot. I mean, Chris went in and into the playground and just asked all these young parents, which is a great representation to have that that segment. So I do feel like we've really reached out from Wilka Common to, you know, these young families. And uh, it, we could really say, I think it's a across the board representation. Yeah. I thought it was great. Debbie did a great job. We had a summary of the work that the Alternative Energy Committee has been doing it was laid out in all of its glory in the frunk of her <laughs> Tesla. Her red Tesla was sitting there, right there with the frunk open and the presentation there. And there were little windmills, um, clipboards with surveys. And we had the electric school bus parked. And not everybody Far realized. Away. It looked like every electric. other bus. It, needs I know, it does look like every. We need to market that. We'll talk about that when we talk about the next thing. Um but it, I, th I thought it was an excellent, excellent job. And we did get a number of surveys, paper surveys filled out. And the QR code was there as well. So nice job, Debbie. Uh, electric school bus, green ribbon cutting ceremony. I would just say I loved it. I thought it was great. a great day. Yeah, it was great. It was great having committee members there. I wish you had been on the bus with us for the inaugural ride. It was really the excitement of the kids. It was so quiet for them. They said, we don't even have to yell to talk to each other. <laughs> and the superintendent at one point, he says, hey, everybody, what do you think we go to the Starbucks and ask for 83 Frappuccinos? And the whole bus goes, yeah! <laughs> and then he's like, you know, Fat Sullivan's like, oh, 
yeah, that probably wouldn't be that good, would it? No, I don't think we can really do that. And Ray was driving and explaining how the brakes regenerate the electricity. It was so nice. And um, I was sitting next to Lisa from the DOER who came down. Um, we had a lot of esteemed guests. We had great speakers. We have great pictures, which we included in the meeting minutes. And we got great press, as you saw from the links. And um, I posted on 143. And this was very funny because I posted on 143 on that Friday, the 26th. And the next day, Earth Day, Jean, and I never look at comments on social media. Um, and Jeannie... Uh, Dippold Healy came up to me and she says, ah, oh, you know, you just have to ignore the comments, Tanya. They're just, they're rancid. I said, what comments? She says, oh, the comments on the posting of the bus. I was like, what? She's like, no, there are people, I don't even know if they live in Kohasa, but they're just, they're so negative. I said, I haven't even looked at them. Then she said, oh, you probably shouldn't. So of course I did and uh, felt the need to educate <laughs> and respond to every single comment because some of them were just so wrong, uh, just so not informed, right? One person, oh, that probably cost us $500,000. And for what? And I got to say, no, actually, it's saving us money. Um, so there was, there, if you go and look at the comments, it's, um, my daughter was laughing at me as I was reading the comments and then my response. <laughs> She's like, mom, <laughs> why are you even responding to that? I said, because it's not right. We need to educate people, right, Debbie? We need to educate people. So I, I thank you to everybody who came. And um, I thought it was a great event. And the school children were happy. And the superintendent was happy. And the town staff was happy. Um, the teachers were happy. One, The science teacher had the entire science class outside for the bus ceremony and they were in the bus on the ride. The green team, Montana, was there. So it was just, it was great. It was great. Probably a total of a hundred people coming and going, 65 at any point in time. And a special thank you, because I did not thank him when I was behind the microphone. Special thank you to our liaison, Ted Carr, our liaison to the school committee who uh, applied his presidential event planning skills to put on a great event for our electric school bus all the way down to the um, it's electric music playing at the end of the at, during the ribbon cutting ceremony. Okay. They're adorable. I'm sorry. Oh, the photos were adorable that were on Facebook and, and I, I, the town hall, the people at 135 King Street had only positive things to say. If that can conquer the negativity on 143. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think that, I mean, again, I guess there's a reason I don't look at social media comments. Um, yeah, so now we just have to track the data and see see how our electric school bus is doing. But I think very successfully it's, not just our initiative at this point, the school has embraced it and that is as it should be. Okay, we're at the end, it's 931. Are there any matters not reasonably known in advance? I'd like to make one little comment about the aviation program I forgot to make. Mm -hmm. uh, you notice I showed a map there where the Green Energy Consumer Alliance is getting the um, buying the class one recs for our ag program. Mm -hmm. um, I should have pointed out that whole, the whole two turbine, which I can see from my bedroom window, uh, is included in among you know, the recs that they purchase. However, it does not look like they purchase any recs for the solar array in the landfill. <laughs> Anyways, I thought that was kind of interesting. Well, I'm sorry, say that again. Green Energy Consumers Alliance buys the mm -hmm. RECs for our aggregation program. Mm -hmm. So among the RECs that they purchase are the ones generated by the whole two turbine that they have at their old landfill. Mm -hmm. 
which mm -hmm. I can see from my window. However, it doesn't appear that they're purchasing any of the wrecks generated by our solar array, mm -hmm. which I thought was kind of unfortunate. I'd like to think that uh, our own our own residents are consuming uh, the uh, power generated by our own solar array, but apparently not. <laughs> Some well, other towns are... can use. <laughs> I mean, physically, we're consuming it. I think um, financially, I'm sure Palmer Capital was able to enter into a uh, contract for those solar credits to ensure a locked-in uh, revenue stream. Yeah. Uh, um, um, what's it? Capital. Um, ah, what's our developer's name again? Capital. Um, Palmer Capital. Palmer Capital. Yeah. Um, so they're apparently not selling their their recs to Green Energy Consumers Alliance. I, I'm sure they've already locked in a long-term sales. Yeah, agreement. yeah, right, right, right. But we are we are giving the people in Hull an incentive to keep that whole two turbine running because for a few months it was out of commission. Now it's running again, and so our aggregation program is giving them a little push to keep it running. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry well, to take up time with that, but I thought it was fun. No, no, that's good. That's good. Anything else not reasonably known in advance? Um, all right, Montana. Good luck with New York City. Have fun. Thanks. I'll be visiting you when I go see my daughter at Hofstra. I know. And well, um, we, can, so. <laughs> just we appreciate all the hard work that you've done for our committee. We couldn't have done it without you. Well, you guys do a lot of good work on your own, but thank you for giving me credit. <laughs> it's all been right. a pleasure you guys well we hope we see you at the next meeting if we don't we'll know why um at this point i would entertain a motion to adjourn no. thank you steve a second second thank you barbara all right we don't have to do roll call vote we can just all in favor say aye aye, aye. 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 all right aye. thank you everybody bye thank everybody you. Bye. Bye. Bye.